Hello? Hello? Hi, how's it going? It's going good. How are you doing? Yeah, good. So, can you tell me a little bit about your experience and what you're looking to achieve from the session? <coughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Um, basically, been working as a software engineer for about five, six years. Uh, initially, been working like um, in the financial area. Some things I've been doing, like building infrastructure for like distributing messages for like currency pay rates, so utilizing like Kafka. Uh, as the basis for that infrastructure, deployed into the proprietary cloud, and um, you developing like libraries for people to use to communicate, um, to produce and consume messages on the broker. Uh, later on, like worked on things like developing end-to-end -end testing frameworks and like helping people with um, their testing as far as like automation to allow for like automated deployment to uh, different environments, especially production, mm -hmm. just making sure we have automation to uh, track testing and other things to make sure everything's still intact as we move fastly and quickly. And then uh, yeah, I did some design for like uh, financial, uh, I mean, for like ads impressions, like developing pipelines there. Um, I guess for me, I'm just trying to see, um, get an understanding of the process, I mean, system design specifically, uh, and just yeah, try to see what the what folks are looking for in this type of interview. For in the future, if I do like system design interviews, I know what to do. Okay, that sounds good, son. So that's like the format I usually do is that we start, and basically you try to go through the problem, and then at the end, I can give you like the feedback and some hints. Uh, so let's start. So the problem that uh, we want to go through today is basically an image processing service. The whole idea is that you uh, would uh, basically have a, a photo for you or like any picture, and you want to apply like some kind of filter on that. It could be like you want to make it cartoon, or basically you want to enhance it or change it to black and white, like basically a lot of filters. So you will open the client. The client could be an application or could be a web portal. It's it's really a flexible. And then you would select which image that you want and basically choose the filter and submit. And then after the image is processed, you will get a notification back. That notification could be an email, could be push notification, could be SMS, it's really up to you with a download link to the uh, the photo after applying the filter to it. And that's basically what you are, what we're trying to build. Um, okay. So um, the first thing you can do is like write down the requirements, make sure you're on the same page, and we'll cover everything that's required. Yeah. I could put a section in the text that talks about like um, requirements here. Yeah. That's so right. I know you talked about um, developing an image processing system. Um, yeah. So I guess as far as uh, functional requirements, yeah, maybe we can make this simply like functional. So you mentioned the user has access to um, different photos. I guess where does those photos originate from? The user would, would have that. It could be on their phone or like it really doesn't matter. Like if they basically send a photo to our system. Okay. Um, would the user acquire an account to utilize the system, or would well, that user what account? I mean, have a, no, it doesn't need an account. It no, it doesn't need to have an account. It can't be anonymous. Okay, so they have photos on their phone, um, for example. So that's or their laptop, whatever the client may be. Yeah. And um, they can use, so they can upload their photo to the system. I guess as far yeah. as the interface. Like, um, how would they be interacting with the UI? Would they be looking at the um, page and uploading photos there? Is there a UI um, involved? No, the UI is, is, is basically irrelevant. It can be an application. It can be like web interface. So we basically want to focus okay. more on the From an API perspective. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, I guess. 
from the uh-huh. user could take a photo. So could it be is it one photo at a time or they could both upload photos? One photo at a uh, time. Oh, we want to limit that. Okay, so they upload one photo. Apply for filter. So I guess who would determine? I mean, I'm assuming the system would determine a different type of filters. And do we need to go into detail as far as what those filters are? Is it like yes. um, social media filters, things like that? Yeah, similar to that. Okay. Um, I guess just to start off, user can upload a photo. And I guess some things is like what type of extensions will be allowed. Um, there's different type of extensions or photo it's- types. So should we yeah, have limit that? It doesn't really matter what extension, like basically whatever, uh, like supported extensions. Okay, fair enough. Let me just put that as a note. Hmm? Um, actually, I just won't put that at all. And then you talk about user can select filters. Um, I guess as far as what those filters are, do we want to go into what the different type of filters are, or should we? Yeah. Um, I guess I'm not. I don't really use like social media that much. As far as I guess the filters, maybe that can add light, um, make it darker. I guess we want to get to that detail. Yeah, it can like make it darker. It can make it black and white. It can make it cartoon. It can remove like face wrinkles, stuff like that. It's really like a lot of filters and basically administrators can add more filters. So the filter list can expand. Okay. Um, so people who manage the system can add more filters. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, I guess as far as I remember you mentioned like user collector filter and I guess there's a amount of latency or amount of time that's allowed because you mentioned that we could process the image and then some notification could happen, whether it be email, mm-hmm. what have you. So there could be some latency as far as um Yeah, it, it can be whatever, maybe a few minutes or something like that, depending on how complicated is the filter. Okay. But I guess um essentially when it's done with the filter we'll notify the user. Yes. Um as far as what that notification could be, I know you mentioned email. Um, can we add that as one and maybe add some other options? It can be email, it can be push notification, really up to you, whichever is easier. Okay. Um, okay, just got a few things. All right. Um, I guess this is okay for now, unless you want to add something. Uh, user uploads a photo to the system, they can select photos, they could be added. Um, by the system as far as the system should have ability to uh, create new filters. And then as far as the processing, the user will get notified um, and download the image. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there could be some latency. We haven't talked about what that is, but so from what I expect, some latency is allowed. I guess that goes into, I guess, maybe how far is in the metrics and understanding like how I should scale for this, um, which is we can call the non-fun- non-functional requirements section. I guess how many users are we trying to build this system for? That give me understanding as far as like the bandwidth and how much requests will be computed. Mm-hmm. So it's basically the surface would be uh, worldwide, but we can start with one country. Uh, one. So we just starting with one initial country. I guess America, mm-hmm. USA. Yes. Okay. So if you want to make it available to them, I mean, there's about 300 million people in the U.S. Or I yep. guess this is just more estimate. Okay. Um. Okay. Fair enough. So we'll cap it out to like 300 million people to start off with the first country. Um. We won't really have an idea as far as how many active users there be. I mean, that won't equivalent to, uh, I guess, for example, monthly active users, or we could just cap it up at 300 million and just say, yeah, we can uh, just the worst case scenario. To 300 million. Active? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. 
Uh, monthly users, per se. So we'd say that's on a daily basis. I mean, yeah, would 300 million be using, would they be actively using it on a daily basis? Well, daily basis could be like 10 million or something, or like, yeah. Okay. So we'll say about 10 million daily users, uh, active daily users. Um, and I guess with that being said, for the day, maybe if we can try to estimate this to potentially request per day, um, or even request per second, if we want to get to that granular. I mean, I guess if there's 10 million people using it actively per day, can we yeah, estimate well, about 10 million requests per day? Or, mm -hmm. oh no, so yeah, no, they can, can be doing multiple requests. So it's a multiple. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we can have multiple. So we can say like maybe uh, 250,000 requests per second or something like that. Okay, fair enough. Request per second. And I guess. Um, I guess, I mean, is there a requirement to store any information? Um, are we storing any data? I mean, I guess for what I see is just applying the filter, but is there any uh, data that needs to be stored on the system? Um, yes, we need to store the images after three months. Okay, or the past three months, so that's the retention period? Yes. Okay. So three month retention period of every image. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, request per second. Uh, I guess as far as like how much data we're gonna be storing, we're storing about three months worth of data. Uh, we get about 150 requests per second. I guess as far as the estimation, how much the size of each request, uh, I wanna guess that'll be in the range of kilobytes. Uh, Maybe a few kilobytes, depending on how many yeah, fields the image, we add. The image size could be like three and four megabytes. Could be even five. Okay, like five. That'd be like the max or the average. No, that's a max. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um. Okay. I guess you would like to use the worst case scenario. So let's say uh, we get 150,000 requests of the worst, the max size per se, and we can limit the size. Um, mm -hmm. So that's gonna be about 750,000 MB per second. Yeah. Uh, I guess we can put that down to the next thing. So next thing is gigabytes, so 750 gigabytes per second. And I guess from a day perspective, we want to times that by 60 to get that in a minute. Uh, times about 60 again to get in an hour. And then 24, I mean, if it's being actively used for the whole day, yeah, we could calculate the worst case scenario based on this logic. So I guess 3,600 times 24 will be about, I guess, uh, times 24, I guess, let's just put that to 72, um, zero. And let's just round it off at approximately 72,000, so we times that about 750 GB. Um, boom, 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 boom. I guess I won't be able to do that math off the top of my head, but let's just say 800, 800. So, about, so that would be 64. We add four and zeros, one, two, three, another two, and a comma. Okay, so we can say about. 
Yeah, 64 million. I mean, this is still in GB per day. So we could take this down. So convert this down to, um, so we got terabytes, um, petabytes, so 64 petabytes per day, potentially. If my math is not, if my math is correct, approximately. Um, okay. Of data that's being stored every day. And we're doing like three months of data, so we can times that by 36. Uh, I mean, times that by about 90 days. So that'd be probably the max amount of data that we'll store in the database. And I guess request per second, 150,000. Yeah, we got a decent size of that. I guess as far as like consistency, um, is there a need to have on every write, we have the latest read, or can we use eventual consistency, like for any data that's being stored in multiple partitions? What do you mean? So, like, okay, let's look at what the system is. We're uploading images. Uh, we're storing that image. Okay, fair enough. So I'm guessing, like, whenever we want to access, so the data is being stored as images. Whenever you want to access that data, do we always want to get the latest read, or can we use a venture consistent? What do you mean by the latest read? Like basically, you upload an image and you apply a filter on it. It doesn't have like multiple versions. Um, just one photo. Okay, I mean, we can keep it simple for now. Just make any you access can, you can between upload, the... You can upload like 10 images, but they are, they yeah. are not, they, there is no like, they are not treated as the same. Even, even if it's the same images, it's still... Yeah, like, I, I got you. Yeah. You're saying once you load an image, there won't be any changes to that image. It's just going to be stored yeah. in the database. Yeah, it is basically you upload an image and it is stored and then after the operation, there is like the after operation, and basically that's the full operation. It has two images before and after. Even if it is the same image that used like 10 times, you have like 10 mm -hmm. before and after images. Okay, fair enough. I guess, I mean, I wanna, we could assume that we wanna make this av as available as possible. I mean, just for it to have an efficient system. And, um, if anything fails, I want to just keep a note on that, like to make the system smart. If like a, system, uh, a server goes down or anything like that, um, to keep in mind like what the strategy will be, I guess for fault tolerance. Um, but I guess for now, we can stop there, maybe look at um, creating an interface so I can understand like the different um, services and contracts that I can create, if you don't mind. I think we have a decent understanding as far as the data being stored, the amount of requests per second, uh, and that and whatnot. Yeah. So I guess yeah, let's just move on to like defining some APIs and interfaces for the system. I mean, I guess it's pretty much from the highest level you upload a photo. Um, so we can put that as like the one function of the system. Uh, simplify code upload. I guess what would you need to do this transaction? Obviously, you need the photo. Um, maybe we'll convert that to bytes or whatever. I mean, we don't have to go to that much detail, but you have the photo, of course. I mean, I don't need any information about, I guess, yeah, I potentially do. I need to identify as far as like who upload this photo because that could be the ID that I can use to send the push notification later on. Um, so maybe I can have that as part of the, yeah, this API, some way of identified user, like put, so say email, phone number, what have you. Um, or we could just do a generic term in case some user ID that we could use later on to mm -hmm. map to some metadata. Um, and I guess, yeah, the main thing is the photo or oh, yeah, the filter that's being used. So, um, I guess. Yeah, we'll probably yeah want to add like what's their selection, what filter they want to apply. 
So send that to the system so it knows what to do when it's processing it. And um, some basic things like maybe timestamp, things that, yeah, things like that. I think that's okay for that. Um, selecting filters, do, do, do. I guess when it comes to um, you upload the photo, so then you're gonna actually um, process or apply the filter. Uh, we could just simply say, yeah, let's be explicit. Let's just say this find the filter. Uh, so basically, yeah, the upload will kick that off. And then the next step, our timing step will be applying the filter. So you still have the photo, the filter ID. And this could be an ID per se. C. Pretty much taking similar contracts, I mean similar I items. So you just need the photo. Actually, you don't need you don't even know who the user is. You just need the photo filter ID to actually apply that logic. So we can have some service to encapsulate like the actual intrinsic in initiation of applying the filter, um, or like a filter service or what have you to actually do that. And after the upload, um, yeah, we can initiate that. And I guess as far as um, when that's done, I guess we can push a notification to back to the user with the new image. Um, so we want a service to handle that logic, um, encapsulate it there, whether it be email, push, uh, things of that nature. We'll, we'll have a service to, um, to handle that specific implementation the way we want to do it. Um, And then you know, basically want to know who we send it to. And uh, yeah, I think we could just stop there for now. As far as the method we do, uh, we can hold on on that. Um, I guess as far as like, I guess before I get to like highlight services, maybe we can just talk about data that's being persisted, some entities that we can define if that's really necessary. I mean, we're not really storing user information that only an account. Uh, do we, but we still want to store images. Um, okay. So one thing we can do is, uh, I guess, yeah, that'll be an entity. Some options we have is to just use a metadata and um, maybe store in a relational database and then use the actual, like, images. We can utilize potentially, like, CDNs to uh, actually store the images, and then we could take advantage of things like geo distribution, um, faster access to the client, things of that nature. Um, there'll be some trade-off as far as like, we need to understand that we're gonna push the images to there, or it's gonna pull it at an interval. That's some things we'll need to take in consideration. Um, I guess filters is one thing that we want to define. So we also talked about like people could add more filters things of that nature. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be stored in a database, but it has to be stored somewhere so we know um, basically what to, I mean, what we have, like what options we have so we can display that to the user. Um, I guess for our schema, we can have like some type of ID, um, the logic, uh, logic being like, what do you want to do to the filter? So that could be, um, it could be in a microservice potentially. Um, and basically we can have this as an interface and have different implementations of it. And basically, um, depending on what the user foot, um, picks, we'll apply the respective logic there. Um, I feel like we should have a good name for that, but yeah, let's do that for now. Um, okay. I think we stopped there for now, maybe to find some services, getting to that point where we have enough understanding of the services, the contracts between them. Uh, so maybe we could define some services and try to put in a uh, highlight a diagram representing a system. Um, yeah, we probably call this like a high level description. So um, I guess going back to interface, we upload the service. So basically, yeah, we can have a service that's 
basically logic is to upload the photos. Uh, so we could say uh, image upload service. Going back to the contract. Yeah, we take the photo, some user information that we could utilize later to send the notification. Understand what the filter time say. Yeah, I think that's okay. That's so that's one in uh, business logic or that represents a single responsibility. As far as tying the filter, I guess we can have the filter service that does that. So that can be the location where we can, as far as the application code, I talked about the interfaces and implementing them and things of that nature. Um, we can also, I guess, persist this as well, because if we want the system to like understand what filters we have, we have that data available. I don't imagine there being that many filters. So we can just use the relational database potentially. And then at the actual logic, like what you do can be reside in the application layer. But nevertheless, we have a filter service that has a calculate that. And I guess the last thing will be um, called notification service, mm -hmm. which following the single responsibility principle is just to like one, this image is done processing. The job is this um, service is to just notify the user with the new image. Um, okay, just going back to the scale. Like, so the non-functional requirements. So we have about, okay, 10 million active daily users, 150 requests per second. Um, so I guess, yeah, load balance will make sense that we have for this decent amount of load to just handle, yeah, the request that's coming in. As far as what algorithm we want to use, um, I mean, I just start off, like starting off with the round robin. Um, that's okay. I guess, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is, I mean, doing this day and age, like whenever the client makes a session within our system, we want to use like encryption to make sure like we can't get hacked. Uh, what? What are I we mean, going that's to encrypt? That's... What was that? What are we going to encrypt here? Oh no, just any communications between the client and server. Just make oh, sure you're basically just talking use... about like having like uh, HTTPS communication. Yes. Yeah, it, it's really not. Uh, a little bit low. I mean, low that's level. The standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That comes. That goes without saying. I just want to notify. I'll be mentioning that. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, I was talking about the load balancer. So um, yeah, that would make sense to have that. Um, yeah, things like DNS. I already talked about a content delivery network, a potential mm -hmm. place for storing the images. And then, I guess, I mean, since you know, codes are saying we use HTTPS. We can just use a web server that serves as the reverse proxy. So when we go past that, we can um, remove the encryption and just allow for the application. When we get to the application layer, that those communications should be a lot faster without being slowed down by HTTPS. Um, maybe, yeah, let's go to draw mode. Okay. I actually haven't used this too much, so I'm sorry if. Yeah, I've, I've struggled with this. I think you are going very well so far. Like, I, I, I have very little notes on your approach. OK. Yeah, I'll just, just start off with the things that I was talking about. Um, so obviously, need a client. Ooh, the text is pretty big. Yeah, yeah we'll fix that later. So. Um, yeah, standard for any system. You're going to use DMS, DNS because nobody types in IP addresses. And then I already talked about the CDN, so let's add that. For the images, if you want to store them and take advantage of those capabilities. Um, yeah, I talked about the load balancers taking 150 requests per second, so that will help. As far as the algorithm for that, yeah, that's something. There's different algorithms we could use. Briefly mention that. Let's just draw this out first. 
Thinnings, yeah, HTTPS. We'll have a web server to handle. Um, yeah, the termination of the encryption, so we that doesn't slow us down in the app layer. Ooh. Yeah, this is different than Google Drawings, but um, yeah, I can. I think you see what's going on here. Hey, right, I guess behind this, we have yeah, the totally, app layer. Totally fine. If you have like drawing is not perfect, you can walk me through like the flow after you complete it. Okay. Um. I guess 150 requests per second, boom, boom, boom. Um, least amount of load, 300 million, we're gonna add more. I mean, yeah, I think a microservice approach would be okay here. Like those services that I mentioned, we could just uh, deploy and maintain them as microservices. And um, yeah, that's easy to create, but like you can use, like if you're using Java, you could use Spring Boot frameworks and things like that to deploy, help you deploy them a lot faster. Um, but I guess for a visual purpose, we'll talk about the image. Ooh. I guess maybe at the same time, do you know how to decrease the tax size on here? Mm -hmm. You know, I decrease the tax size. The tax is super big. I, I guess it's okay. Let's just, yeah, let's keep going. Uh, talk about the image. Upload service. So going back to single responsibility principle, this is just uploading images. So I'll talk to the database, and then yeah, persist that information there. Then send it off to the filter uh, service. I guess as far as like um, how it communicates with the filter service um, to like utilize um, the capabilities of where the image upload service is being deployed, we can just make the Filter basically a, a one option is to make it a synchronous, so it just like passes it and go, and then apply the filter logic. Talked about the low level code a little bit, but then when that's done, it can also send a synchronous message to a notification and then basically focus on sending that notification back with the new image back to the client. Um, yeah. yeah, so let's just make all those communications asynchronous for now. And I guess the last thing will be how the notification service will be communicating back to the client. So let's talk about that last if we have time. Yeah, that won't be talking to any databases, image upload. And then, yeah. This filter. Service. Oh, taxes here. Okay. So, oh, the whole of taxing go there. That's filter. Oops. Yeah, this one is a filter service here. If you see where my mouse is at. Um, I guess for as far as notification, I mean, if we're doing email, then, I mean, I guess it depends on what type of notification you're going to do. If you know, it's we email, can do email, I think it's the simplest. Okay. Yeah, if it's email, then there's no really, we're not talking back to the client as if it was a push notification. We just send an email to um, the user and yeah. make sure they have the image. And then, yeah, I want to make sure you get that information on the upload uh, or you don't know who to send this to. And as far as I guess that where we want to store the email, I mean, it could be a pass through. So on the upload, yeah, let's say you get the email, apply the filter, this notification. Yeah, I guess it just be a pass through from the image upload. We'll just keep on passing it to the different services till it gets to the push notification. 
because we don't have no requirement to like create user accounts and store metadata for a user. Mm -hmm. I guess is there anything? Yeah, there's a lot of things we could hone in on. Um, in the system, is there anything you want to focus on specifically? Going back to the requirements. I guess one thing, yeah, I briefly mentioned this as far as like how the filter service works. Uh, oh yeah, so it is going to be some type of storage to store the filters, so the system can just know what filters we have already. I don't imagine it being too a lot, uh, so we can store that in a relational database. As far as the images as well, at least the meta, the IDs for an image that could work together with the CDN to store that information. Um, but as far as the logic, yeah, we want to make sure we use object. I guess, yeah, we can just use interfaces and implement them with different filters. So we want to think of a filter as something being extract. So what is a filter? Basically, it has logic as far as how you want to apply to an image. And I guess that could be the one abstract method that we have for it. And then as people want to create filters, mm -hmm. we'll just um, create the implementations in the filter service, like I said before, and uh, make sure we uh, persist that information to whatever storage we have mm -hmm. so it's available to, so we know the state of filters that we have in the system. Yeah, so one of the problems that we have right now, this is just a list of, of basically the, the components that we have, but we don't mm -hmm. have yet like an overall image of, of how those components are connected and basically how they scale. Like for example, you are talking about putting stuff in storage. What kind mm -hmm. of storage and how can we scale that? Is it a database, oh, yeah. a file storage? Um, I guess starting off with the entities that we have, so we talk about images. Um, I mean, we're gonna have potentially 300 million users uh, loading. So it could be a decent amount of scale. And then if you add more countries, it'll be more yeah, it'll be more. Um, I mean, I guess as far as how we want to store a database, I guess the first thing for me is whether we want to use a relation SQL versus NoSQL. Um, I guess the criteria or the thing to determine that is, um, I mean, if I think of NoSQL as far as like high reads, um, crazy amount of data that I'm accessing frequently at a high rate. I guess as far as the images are concerned, I mean, for now, we're just throwing them. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, we could use like a potentially MySQL. I mean, it has options like um, for scalability, like if you want to do any partitioning, need be, we can do that. As well as, I guess one thing is we didn't mention is as far as reads, write ratio. Um, we didn't really talk about use cases where we're reading the image information. So the downloaded image per se uh, will be a result of the filter service and that'll be passed on. So that's not, I guess, yeah, let's stick with a relational database because it's going to be like write heavy. We don't have use cases as far as we're going to be reading images yet, but I guess like a MySQL database will give us options to, um, like if you want to create indexes, partition, we'll have those options available. And I don't think it'll be too crazy that it won't be able to handle. Like I wouldn't say let's use a NoSQL database right off the bat hmm. for that entity. And same thing for filters, like I would imagine filters are limited i mean I, I don't use social media too often but it's not going to be like millions of filters um so we can also use that mysql database um they can be a part of the same database images and filters 
for now. Yeah, we can use it as part of the same database. And like I said, to have options to scale, even though I'm not worried about filters too much, the main concern would be images. But like I said, to give reduce the load as far as how much storage is, at least from the storage perspective, we're not actually storing the images there. We're just storing uh, metadata, an ID that references an image and maybe some like timestamp information, things of that nature. So I don't think it'll be like scaling too much and storing too much crazy data that my SQL won't be able to handle. Uh, okay. I think like usually in system design, I tend to like leave 20 minutes at the end, like in, in, in uh, coding, questions I tend to leave like 10 minutes but in system design I tend to leave like 20 because I want to give both feedback and hints okay. so uh, basically overall it really like the, the, the decision of basically whether you would pass like a system design interview would depend on like which level you're applying for so do you have okay. an idea which you're applying for um well, I'm not actively interviewing. I mean, I just did some interviews, but um, yeah, I'm not actively interviewing at the moment. I guess like I have yeah. about six years of experience. I'd probably say mid-level or senior engineer. Okay, so basically if you're applying for mid-level, I think with what you presented so far, it's going to be a pass, but for uh, like a senior level, it would be challenging. And I tell you like what could you have done differently to make it like a pass in post levels, okay? So okay. the whole idea of the system design interview, you, you designed a lot of services. So I can tell from like your experience, you went to school a lot. One thing that you would notice with system design, or actually two things. First of all, it takes a long time. Like it's not really yeah. something you can do in one hour. It takes a lot of iterations. So it is usually like weeks of work, depending on how big it is. And the second part, like if you compare system design to basic like problem solving. Problem solving is a binary uh, work. Whatever code you mm -hmm. write is either going to solve it or not. But for system design, it really doesn't matter what you do, it is going to do something. So if you just basically like for your system design, you put like a single machine with everything in a monolith and basically it's like a website. So it's like pre 2000 era, it is going to work, but is it going to scale and basically does everything the way we want? That's a different question. So yeah. what is expected in a system design is basically you should be leading everything as an architect. So it's basically you can think of it as, oh, we are a company, we brought you as an architect. So we basically, we are the client, you are the architect backslash business developer, you are leading everything. So mm -hmm. one thing most people don't know in system design interviews, 80% of passing that interview depend about like asking the right questions. 20% is everything else. And out of that 20%, like 15% or more, so basically the majority of the remaining 20% is about how did you reach the solution more than the solution itself. Solution itself is like 5% of the full image. So it is not really like uh, the, the top thing to do. So the, okay. the thing that you missed from uh, this conversation. First of all, at some points, this is very important if you're applying for senior. It's less important if you're applying for med. You didn't okay. really leave. So you basically, for example, when I was talking about like how to scale database, you, you basically give me options of like, are we going to choose like uh, a relational versus like uh, NoSQL? Basically, or if you are going to use like relational, are we going to use my SQL, are we going to do like sharding, stuff like that. So it's basically you are telling me all the different options that are available that basically we can use to scale. That's not leading. Like basically you need to treat me as a client who really doesn't understand those options. So you need to tell me which option you choose. You take a decision on that and basically tell me why did you choose that option. So that's the first thing that you need to do. Second thing. Okay. You missed some questions which are very important to determine like the complexity of the system. For example, when it came to the image, you didn't ask about like 
the, the format of the image. You asked about like the extension, but not the format. And mm -hmm. by format, like basically how many megapixels? When it comes to image processing, the size of image is not really relevant. What is more important is how many megapixels. Because if you look at an image, which is like a PMP and basically a JPG, a JPG could be like 50, K, 50 kilobytes, but it has much more megapixel than a PMP, which is like two megabytes. And basically image processing mm. is dependent on the number of megapixels or basically the number of pixels in the image much more than the size. The size is good for calculating the, the bandwidth for the network. But mm -hmm. the megapixel is basically for calculating the complexity of the, of, of the processing itself. You also didn't ask, are we going to do videos or just images? One very important piece of information that you also didn't ask is the format of the filter. Is it like a, a black box binary file? Is it like an equation? Is it like a, a text file? W what is exactly the filter? Also, one of the things that you didn't ask is basically how many times a user is allowed to upload an image per day or per hour or whatever uh, thing. Because one of the issues that we're having here is basically how can we prevent like a distributed denial of service attack? What if someone uploads like a million images per, per, per hour or something like that? Uh, one of the things mm -hmm. that you missed on the API design, you design the API to notify the user using user ID, but we said that we may not have an account. So it needed to basically take something like user email or something like that. This is really not that big of a deal because it's a very small detail. But what is more important is basically you missed an API to list the filters itself. Like basically if I open the application, I said that I'm going to choose a filter and upload an image. I will not be able to choose a filter unless there is an API that I call to give me the list of available filters. So mm -hmm. this is also a missing API. Uh, what else on the options? Yeah, oh, the final solution itself, we had a list of elements, which is basically not really a system diagram, but more like a logical uh, component list that lists what, what is there, but basically not how they interact together. So one thing I always tell people in system design, you can think of system design as a Lego project. So Lego components are the same. Like there are predefined or predetermined amount of different Lego pieces. The way you put them together is different. You can put them together and come up with a car. You can put them together and come up with like a castle. So what you listed is basically the Lego pieces, but they are not placed together to show me like how the system would flow. So one thing that you need to do, or basically to, to correct this, first of all, is to how to ask the questions in a good format that would allow you to collect all information. So to do this, I added some text here, you can see at the end. So to ask questions in a way that would guarantee you that you get all the, the, the different pieces that you missed, you need to have a framework of asking a question. This is a framework that worked for me really fine. And it's basically, you need to split your questions into three groups. The first group is why questions. Second, the group is what questions. Third, the group is how questions. So why questions are very useful to understand the purpose of the system. Understanding the purpose basically would bring you a lot of information at once. Like basically, if you ask me what is the purpose of this system, I would tell you we are making that to basically uh, collect information from images that would would allow us to build better like image uh, face recognition system. And we are targeting one country, but the goal is target worldwide. Those are basically some of the questions that you asked about like scale and stuff like that, just by answering one question. Second group is what? What is basically defined into two subgroups? First one is business requirements, which is basically functional requirements. What are the business goals? Here, you need to ask about all things that define the system, like the image format. Are we using videos or not? Stuff like what is the filter formats, all of that. Second group is not really relevant to an interview, but relevant in real life, which is basically logistical requirements. Like, are we building an MVP or building a full product? What is the team size? What is the budget? Stuff like that. 
Last group is basically about the how. How are we building the system? It has two subgroups. First of one is product requirements. Product requirements is basically a mix between non-functional requirements and features. For example, a, a very good question that would come to this group is basically image extension. It's basically, can the user apply multiple filters on the same image or not? So questions that basically extend your functional requirements and also non-functional requirements. Last group is technical requirements. Are we allowed to use like cloud service or we need to build like on-premise or basically bare metal, like which options? And that would answer questions like, can I build my storage system or I can use S3? Once you answer those questions and basically make sure that you ask every relevant question, that's 80% of interview is done. Next question or next action is basically built uh, or, or the advice here, never mix high level with low level. So a high level is basically the component that you had in drawing mode. Low level is basically the definition of APIs. Mixing high level with low level always end up with you forgetting some details. My advice is basically go level by level. Let me give you an example. The first thing that you need to build, like after collecting all the questions, is this image. Can you see that link? Yes. Can you open it? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. So this, uh, this yeah. is not really a system, a detailed system design, but it basically, if you look at that image, you can understand the flow. So you have the user on the top. The user would send a request to a service called orchestrator to get a list of filters. The orchestrator would call a filter manager, which would load the list of filters, push it back to the user. User then can select the image, select the filter, push it back to the orchestrator. What the orchestrator would do is first upload the image into the photo manager, which in turn push it to S3 storage. And then it will basically encapsulate the request into a package and push it to a queue. On the other side of a queue, we have a photo processor node, which basically extract those list of, of uh, requests. Each request would have a photo ID, which is basically an ID for the photo in S3 storage, a filter ID, and basically a user information, which could be user email. What the photo processor would do, it basically extract the filter from the filter manager, extract the image from the photo manager, process the image. After it is done, it will push the result back to photo manager, which push it back to image storage, and then after all is done, it will send uh, 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 basically a package containing the user information and the link to the final image in another queue. On that other side of the queue, we have a notification service that will just extract those packages from the queue and push it to the user. So you can look at that image and it basically tell you the user journey. Now there is another image, that another link that I pasted which is basically the admin journey, how the admin can add new filters. The admin would connect directly to the filter manager through like a web interface or something, which is basically uh, can push new filters into the filter uh, uh, manager. The filter manager is connected to two nodes. One of them is a filter metadata, that's a database. And the second part is a filter storage. And that's basically an S3 storage for the filter file. The filter here is a binary file. So it's basically just a binary file describing the filter that the, the, the node, uh, the basically the processing node can understand and deal with. Now, when you put it in this way, first of all, you can draw all of that in like 10 minutes. Second of all, it is very hard to understand any details because all that is on the same level. It's very high level. So after you complete this, that's about like 95% of the interview. Now, the next question that your interviewer would ask is basically, okay, how can you uh, basically scale the filters metadata database? How can you scale the photo processor? Uh, what would happen if a request goes to orchestrator and then the node dies? So if I asked you how to scale photo processor, that's the third image. Now that's, we are going one level deeper, which is basically how can we define the photo processor? The so photo processor is basically a list 
of or a cluster of nodes. On the top of those nodes, we have, in this case, it's not really a, like a load balancer. It's like a job that's extracting uh, requests from uh, like uh, the queue from the previous image, and it sends those into a load balancer. And the load balancer would determine which node to hit from. On the top of that cluster, we have like a Redis cache that has a list of most or commonly used filters. It will look for the filter in the cache. If it's not in the cache, it will load it from the filter manager. And then it will load the image from the photo manager. It processes everything and then it sends to, to the next one. So it's basically try to drive the interview to go level by level. And then any question that it's going to be asked to you would become very easy to answer. Like, how can you scale the filter the metadata? Maybe we can use like a CQRS pattern, like basically multiple read patterns and maybe a couple of write patterns. Uh, sorry, multiple read instances and a couple of write instances. And we can use like a CQRS uh, model here. What if orchestrator failed? Maybe we have like a job that would retry or maybe the client itself would have like a timeout. And if it didn't hear back from the orchestrator, it would resubmit the, uh, the request. So it is very easy to go level by level rather than doing everything. After you complete that level, you can ask your interviewer, do you want me to list the APIs? In most cases, in most interviews, people don't really get interested in APIs because it's a little bit low level. If there is time at the end, you can do that, but it's usually not the most important part of the interview. Does that all make sense? Okay. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. So I guess what I put in line 35 to 37 was not necessary, is what you're saying? It is, it's a little bit low level. So the whole idea of system design is how can you start the system? Basically, uh, uh, APIs are, are usually the end of system design. You basically de determine what the systems are, what are the subsystems, how can they communicate together, what is the flow, and then at the end you start building the public interface, which translates into your API. So it's usually like not really the first or second or even the third step. Okay, seems fair. Um, what game is going over there? information uh okay yeah so like we like really like um uh, as i said technically you have everything that's taken like you understand all the components you understand how they are used for you it is just mainly how you arrange your thoughts that's the only missing part gotcha so it was like uh a way to just organize my questions to maintain yeah. like a flow. Yeah, the, only, the main problem with system design, uh, uh, like when you compare it to like problem solving, system design, it's not really about knowledge. It's about how we prove you have that knowledge. Problem solving is mm -hmm. about knowledge. Like it is easy to prove your knowledge in a problem solving. Either you solve the problem or not. System design, it's much harder. There is a bit of subjectivity here. And in order for you to lead on that subjectivity, you need to be very organized. Yes. Okay. Yeah, any other questions? It seems like, yeah, it seems like I got a lot to work on. Just because we will yeah, a lot of things, other things we discuss. Yeah, it is, it is not Which really is okay. a lot to work on, but more like just it changing the arrangement of your stuff. Like if you looked at everything that I said, you already mm -hmm. touched those points. It is just like the way you go. If you go level by level, it would naturally happen. Okay. One one gotcha. very advice, one very uh, simple advice that you can use, which basically makes things a lot easier, is try to think about persona. Persona is basically one uh, design. Uh, uh, like system, which is basically you define the users that use your system, mm -hmm. build like something like a psychological profile for them, and basically put yourself in their okay. shoe and think about how they will use the system. And naturally, everything would come. So this system has two personas. 
We have the user persona and the admin persona. As a user, try to think if you have that application, what is the flow? You open the application, you see a combo box with a list of filters. Here is your first API call. And then after you select the filter, you select the image and click submit. Second, that's the second API call. So it's basically just putting yourself in the shoe of, of your users would make a lot of those questions just start jumping into your mind. Uh, I see. Okay. That's, a, uh, that's probably the best point of view to help you like think about the different scenarios for things that come up. Yeah. That can come up. Okay. Yeah, I keep yeah, note that down for sure. Cool. But yeah, yeah this is all how oh, I think yeah, this was a lot of information, pretty a lot of helpful information. So I'm gonna just take some time after this call and process the information yeah. and go from there. Yeah, the good thing is that the session is recorded so you can see it as much time as you want. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I plan on doing is going back to the video, looking at the notes. Yeah. And yeah, going from there. Awesome then. If there is but no yeah. more questions, I Thanks. think yeah. Good luck with your uh whatever coming in your interviews. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Take care. Goodbye.